Hello, and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Richard Griscom, and I am the host for today's talk. If you're participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat window of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation, or request to use your microphone by raising your hand after the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Martin Maus. Martin is a professor of African linguistics at Leiden University, and his research focuses on the description of Cushitic languages, including Iraq and Alagua, as well as the exploration of language and identity, valency changing verbal derivations in the languages of East and West Africa. Please join me in welcoming him as he gives his talk towards the linguistic history of Rangi Mbugwe. Uh, thank you, Richard. I'm very sorry that I was a few minutes late. Yes. So why this talk? Because you've just heard that I'm interested in all sorts of other things. But at the moment, I have a project. And that uh, project is what I've been interested in for a long time. And that's the early history of East Africa. The way I'm going to go about this project, and that is with a couple of other people, Ahmed Sosal and, uh, and also Christian Rappold, is we will, we will uh, for example, look at contact areas and, and try to get a stratification of the linguistic history of those areas. One of those areas is the Tanzania Rift Valley. So that's why, why, where I am today. And not really, but in my thoughts. The central issue then is the stratification of non-Bantu transfer into Bantu and other languages for East Africa. Well, Rangi and Bukwe are exactly in the West Rift Cushitic area. So that is why I wanted to work on this. And um, I arranged to give a webinar, but I'm actually more or less at the beginning of my research, but still I will present to you um, where I am at the moment and what I still want to do. Uh, Rangi, I will use Rangi, I should use, I was, maybe I should say Langi or Kilangi or whatever but I'll use Rangi and Mbukwe for Bowe. Uh, and I'm going to assume that Rangi and Mbukwe are genetically closely related. I think that is not, not really contested, but I will, will also not try to show it. Um, the, the two main topic of my presentation will be first of all, gen the genetic relationship of Rangi and Mbukwe with, well, the rest of F30 or uh, Chaka, Chaka Taita languages. Uh, the second topic will be Rangi and Bukwe in contact, not with each other, but with other languages in the area. This is a map, I think I have this from uh, uh, Bala, Bala Masele and Derek Nurse. Usually my maps are smaller, but this shows also the, the Lake Victoria and the Kisukuma area and all of that of the F30. But then uh, Rangi is here and Bukwe is here. Uh, so the first topic is, uh, is it F30 or Chagapare? Taita as well. In a bush, uh, Nurse Philip Sondi said, Rangi shares the shift of proto L or proto D to R, to a R, before a high vowel, shares that with Chaga and Davida. Davida is one of the Taita languages on the border of Tanzania and Kenya, just in Kenya, in those Taita hills. Um, so that, that, that is the, the beginning, I think, of the basis of this idea that maybe Rangi, and with Rangi and Bukwe, uh, they are actually genetically related to, to Chaga. Um, what does Masele? Masele, Bala Masele wrote a PhD thesis in Newfoundland in, on, um, on the history of the zone F, the history of the, of the phonology of the languages of zone F. And, uh, he states that the behavior of Proto-Bantu D in F33, that is Rangi, and F34, that is in Bukwe, isolates them from zone F. And in the article that uh, he wrote with his supervisor, it's sort of a summary of this thesis, Rangi and Bukwe were shown 
not to be part of the group, of the F30 group, and excised. And that's also then based on other publications. Mm, Nurse has uh, earlier stated that lexicostatistically, Rangi book would just belong to West Tanzania, which is F30. Is that inheritance or borrowing? And, um, and then uh, the arguments are that the phonological features of zone F show differences. There are differences in the reflexes of protobantu in zone F30. And it shows some phonological uh, similarities with uh, Pare and Chaga. We'll look into that. Um, but if you look at the overview article that Marcelle and Nurse published in 2003, summarizing Marcelle's thesis, on F30, then you see here a table of the main uh, phonological innovations in this area of F30, well, F, the whole F group. But um, what you see here is that, uh, okay, we have Bantu spiritization, that is, uh, yeah, a specific Bantu uh, phonological development of uh, fricativization before high vowels, high close vowels. Uh, seven to five shift refers to the number of vowels. DL refers to Dahl's law, which is a, a nasalization in, in a, a consonant harmony. Uh, voiceless nasal, VL nasal, refers to whether the nasal is produced in a voiceless manner and P lenition, uh, the, the lenition of P uh, before vowels. Uh, if you look at the table, yes, no, yes, yes, etc. cetera, um, what is clear from the table is that, that it goes all sorts of different directions. So there's no clear cut innovation for the whole of this group. And there's also for F33, F34, Rangi and Bukwe, the two languages that, that, that we are interested in. It's not uh, from this no and yeses, it's not clear how they would link to any, closer to any of these other languages in this wider group. Nurse, then going back to Nurse 1999, uh, about uh, phonological innovations in, in Bantu East uh, Africa. He notices a few um, for uh, Rangi. Um, but he also states that there are no clear isoglosses for F30. We will look at some of these in the, in the, in the next slides. Stegen, Oliver Stegen has taken up this um, work by Marcelle and Nurse, and um, he has then looked more carefully into Rangi, that he was working on Rangi, so he had much more data, lexical data on the Rangi, and could extend his uh, Rangi reflexes of protobantu cons consonants with much more examples. Um, this is his table from, this is the same table as from Marcella and Nurse, but just only Rangi, F33 taken from that. And, and then he noticed that uh, the high number of double reflexes, that's also what Nurse al already said. What does that mean? Double reflexes means that you have for one and the same protobantu sound, you have uh, two, two different uh, um, reflexes in the present day language, in the Rangi. And so how can that happen? That can, of course, happen with lexical items entering in later from other Bantu languages. And that is what happens all over Bantu. So um, a lot has happened there in, the, in, the, in Rangi. That is what is clear. No matter what the, the classification is, whether it's uh, we, we bring it to the, to the group of uh, Nyadamba, Nyaturu, uh, Nyanzu, uh, Nyamwezi, all the Nya languages, or to Chaga uh, Taita, whatever way our uh, decision is, there will be a lot of uh, in Bantu Bantu borrowing in that area. What Stegen did in this present, this is a presentation, presentation at the Colloquium of African Languages Linguistics 2003, is he made a 
uh, a distinction between the reflexes of uh, protobanto words in the Rangi from um, a first list which included reconstructed protobanto where, where zone A and zone B in Bantu, so the the, the, the Cameroon Gabon area where, where they were involved. Uh, those zones are closer to the to the to the origin area of Bantu, so they are more likely to reflect real protobantu, presenting representing real protobantu stems. And then he added uh, another 400 lexical items for which the, no no reflexes were found in zone A and B. I actually don't see why this is so relevant because we are not very close to the first uh, bifurcations in the Bantu tree. We are in East Africa here. And, and, and even if, if, we, uh, if we don't go up to the whole level of Proto-Bantu, um, we are still uh, looking at innovations for this particular area. So it's not so clear why this is important in his argumentation to me. Um, so, what, so some of these phonological developments is that discussed by Stegen. Uh, one of them is this pilanition. This is, occurs in the, in the uh, Rangi and Bukwe uh, that you see here, the P before the E and the U, and these are the, the close E and U. They're um, realized in, in the, at the bottom row there in F33 as F before those high vowels. That is what uh, uh, Marcele and Nurse have uh, seen. And they have noticed that this is something that, that you also find in Chaga, in Pare, in Sagala. Sagala is one of the, this is not Tanzanian Sagala, this is Kenyan Sagala, one of the Taita languages. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what seems to be a common innovation uh, with uh, Chaga and, and Pare. Um, with the extra lexicon that um, that Oliver Stegen has then uh, um, researched, he shows that in this number 18 on the slide, that there are quite a number of, of items in Rangi that have F as a as a reflex of P, but not in that in that specific context. So uh, that is then, uh, uh, yeah, sort of uh, addition or uh, correction on the statements by Marcelle and Nurse. Um, but in my view, this doesn't really question the lenition before high vowels, the one that is shared with Chaga, Pare, and Taita. And uh, another example, another. Um, uh, way these Rangi terms could have another explanation why they could have uh, F instead of P in these words, if these words were, for example, from Nyaturu, because Nyaturu has F as regular reflex of P in all contexts, not only before the high vowels. So I tried to find these um, words in Nyaturu, and here you see already one of my challenges for a few. I find some cognates for others, I don't, and that is partly because my uh, lexical sources for Nyatura are simply not rich enough. But for some of them, we see uh, the same items uh, exist in Nyaturu. So that idea of transfer from Nyaturu cannot be excluded. And are these ones shared between Rangi and Bukwe? Because Oliver only looked at Rangi. Yes, in fact, those few for which I can show the the link with Naturo, they are actually shared with, with um, Bukwe. So it is both for Rangi and Bukwe. So P2F uh, is, in my view, not really uh, uh, refuted by uh, uh, Stegen. Uh, another change is the T to CH before high vowel. This is only look at the last three columns in, in, in this slide. Um, and this is from Marcele and Nurse, this, uh, this table. And for, for the last, the last row is Rangi. And this is in fact confirmed by Stegen. 
with uh, more data. But then we have this sound change that, that, that would be, that was the beginning of this idea that maybe Rangi Mbukwe could be actually linked to, to the Chaga area. And it, it's about the, the realization of proto D, proto Bantu D, proto Bantu L, that's depending on who you follow. But then the reflex of R or an R before a high vowel. So we have that in Chaga, D to R, uh, R before high vowel in Chaga. Also in Sagala, one of the Taita languages before U. Actually, here we saw it also. Now we saw it for both E and U. Uh, what does Tegen find? He finds, yes, it is in C1 position, not only before E and U, but also before E and E. So in more context, and it is also in C2 position, not only uh, um, if the this high vowel follows, but also if it proceeds or front vowel pre proceeds. So um, it's not exactly only in that context that we have this change in the, in the Rangi. So it, uh, my conclusion is that it, still could be a shared innovation and then subsequent developments, or it could be two parallel uh, phonological changes that are similar, but but uh, parallel, different. Stegen's conclusions are a bit different. He says, uh, Rangi is after all Bantu F. Uh, he bases this on the tonal development. I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, discuss that. Uh, partly because I'm I'm not so convinced that, that this is this really shows a shared innovation within uh, Bantu F30 that the correspondences are not regular for the high low and the high high from Proto Bantu um, and uh, his other arguments are those that I've just just discussed. The third argument, which he doesn't value very highly, is, is the oral traditions, which in his reading of them favors a migration origin from the West, but actually other migration stories are mentioned as well. And then he concludes influences, influences from, sorry, influences from not Bantu and from Bantu zone G should also be looked at. This is something I haven't done and I will not discuss here. So it's something still to be done. He doesn't mention morphological innovations. We'll come to that in a second, although they are mentioned in his article. But first on the phonology, Dunham in an article on, uh, on the history of, uh, of Rangi links the uh, also tries to to strengthen those links to the to the north to Chaga. She mentions the fact that there are empty onsets like we have in Gueno, and this uh, variation that we have for the name Bugu Bugwe, the Bugwe language and the, the name Bugu in Upara or in Usambara is the same name, and that kind of variation in Upara you have that variation between Bugu and Bugwe. So the gu and gue, uh, or the u and we word finally. You have that in Rangi, internal variation. You have that also as uh, uh, correspondences between bukwe and Rangi. So that is something that is uh, shared in those two areas. Uh, yeah. And maybe my order of slides is not good um, but um, my in, um, preliminary conclusion on the phonological evidence is that it is not refuted nor strengthened by Stegen there is little evidence for Rangi Mbukwe innovation within the F group of languages and there's no conclusive evidence for either on the both basis of the phonological developments but then we have some morphological criteria. Uh, um, 
one of them, number one, I have the list here, and I've taken them from several authors. So Stegen, in this article that I discussed, uh, he mentions a few. Margaret Dunham, she has a few in this article on the history of uh, Bukwe and Narangi, and Derek Nurse also has uh, mentioned some of these. I put them together, um, and uh, these are the E. Um, infix, as it's sometimes called in Bantu, the prefix that is used for the reflexive in many Bantu languages uh, is also used for a reciprocal, marking of reciprocal. 19 as the plural class for class K, for the diminutive class. Two different plurals of, two different class tens as plurals of uh, class 11. And a prenominal demonstrative in Rangi, Shamba, and Bugu. And additional clause final negation in Rangi and Bukwe in East Chaga. Those are a few criteria that I uh, mentioned. I'll go through them one by one. The E infix, this is a strong um, indication of a common innovation, a morphological innovation that Rangi and Bukwe share with the F30 uh, languages, the F, F language, yeah. Um, in, it is, uh, as we have in the first quote by Oliver Stegen, the reciprocal suffix an has merged semantically with a reflexive marker e. So we have it in, in the Rangi. And then he remarks that from personal communication with Derek Nurse, it is a li limited innovation shared with the Bantu F languages like Sukuma and Yamwezi. Um, yes, in book we have it too. Vera Willemsen has that in her uh, dissertation. And she remarks something interesting that it's actually also uh, uh, happens in some of the, the, the G languages, as is discussed by Petzl and Hammerstrom. Uh, in Yamwezi, it's the reflexive E, which is also used uh, for. Uh, for a uh, reciprocal, I have that, I show this with a number of natural lexicalized reflexive infixes for natural uh, uh, reciprocal words like to play and to quarrel. You will always do that reciprocally. And here they are not marked with the, the normal uh, un um, derivation, but with the E reflexive. Yaturu to the E. So yes, this is this seems to be an innovation that is that is common uh, with the F languages and the Rangi and Bukwe. The plural uh, 19 as a plural of ka is, is um, well, 19 as a, as a plural for diminutive is quite common all in the Bantu, but more in the West and not so common in the in East Bantu. Um, so the other Bantu languages, the Bantu F languages, they use uh, uh, the two, the 13 plus 13 as the plural. Um, what do we have? Um, well, we, uh, we have it in, uh, in Yamwezi indeed, and in, and in Rangi and in Bukwe. But then a number of the other uh, F, uh, languages, F13 languages like Naturu, maybe Nihanzu. Uh, yeah, may, maybe Andrew can help us here. Also, they, they make the diminutive by compounding with something like um, a, a word for child. So they don't use this uh, normal way of putting it into the diminutive class. Uh, Vera Wilhelmsen also, again, uh, notes a very interesting link of this phenomenon with a number of the Marabantu languages. Not all of them, interestingly enough, but some of them. Um, so something to look into. This is not a clear link to Chaga. Uh, this is a, a clear link uh, among some of the, of the F languages and of also some of the Marabantu languages. Um, two plurals of class 11. That is what something that Derek Nurse already mentioned is that we have in Chaga for the plural of class 11, 10, like eh, normally in 
down to 10 or five or six, but for the 10, there are two different forms of the 10. So you have the, the normal, the, the, the nasal nasalization of the initial consonant as a marker of class 10, but there's actually in Chaga also a prefix zo for a variant of class 10, here called 10a. In the, in the whole agreement, this follows 10, but the noun class prefix has a, has a an allomorph. Mm. Also in Davida and Sagala, two of the Taita Bantu languages just over the border in Kenya, those Taita hills, they have the same, they have chu as a very common uh, 10a uh, uh, noun class prefix as the plural of class 11. Uh, we have it in, in, in Rangi. I show you here a number of, uh, of those uh, plurals in Zhu from uh, Macrodonum's thesis and uh, but you also these are the few and in in the Rangi as far as I can see the most common plural formation is with the, the nasal formation but there are just a few items which have Nzu. I don't find anything like Nzu in Bukwe I hope uh, hope to be corrected nor does uh, Vera um, uh, Naturu doesn't seem to have it, but I found, but I have, this is, this is, this is hopeless. These are my, my own notes, Verhoeven here that I, that you see in the, in the slide. That's a manuscript of the early 19, uh, 20th century that I found in the archives of the White Fathers in Rome. I couldn't make a copy there that was not allowed. I made some notes. I wish I, uh, I had, I had a, a, a mobile phone in those days and could have taken a picture. I have to go back. Uh, the seems, he mentions Ndu, but I don't have any examples uh, to corroborate that. Yaramba is in Zinzi as plural for monosyllabic roots. It's mentioned by Johnson, but again, with only, with no examples mentioned and um, no, no sign of it in Itamaya. So that's, a little bit unclear to me what is happening with the two plurals of class uh, 11 in that area. And also Nyamwezi doesn't seem to have this, but we have it in, in the Rangi. We don't seem to have it in Bukwe and we do have it in Chaga Davila Sagala. So this looks then again with the shared morphological innovations of Rangi, strangely enough, not in Bukwe and Chaga and Taita. But I'd love to know more about the traces in the rest of Bantu F30. Prenominal demonstratives is something that Donna mentions. I won't pay much attention to that because I think that it's so common in Bantu that it can't be conclusive. Additional clause final negation that has been uh, discussed uh, at length. Um, uh, I don't think it's uh, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon in uh, as a contact phenomenon. And we'll come back to that in a minute. But, uh, but not as a common innovation with Chaga because they're completely different forms. So it doesn't look and, uh, like a common uh, innovation with uh, Chaga. So concluding for the classification of Rangi in Bukwe on phonolog phonological grounds, I would say it's undecided whether it goes to Chaga or to F30. On morphological grounds, some indications that it is indeed uh, it, it should be classified, those two, as uh, F30, but some hesitation. And in lexical grounds, well, there's a lot of work to do. And um, that will be the second part, come in the second part of my presentation. First, a little bit now on the contact. The contact, I first look into morphosyntax, but briefly, because we have had presentations also here in the, in the Rift Valley uh, seminars on a number of these uh, topics. The final extra uh, uh, negation that we have in uh, in Rangi and in Bukwe with the Tuku, uh, which is shared with Borunge and Alakwa. It is also a word that is common in Maasai for uh, intensify, not all. So it is intensifies in Bukwe, the, the negation, and it is yeah, it is a needed extra final element in the, in the Rangi. And this is the, the nice uh, from the table of Gibson and Martin, where they discuss a number of, of, uh, of issues in, in the Rangi. Is it contact phenomenon or is it uh, independent uh, innovation internally? 
this is their conclusion for the post-verbal negative marker. It could be both. Uh, there are some indications. Uh, maybe let me conclude it's a bit of both. Mm. Dunham 2007 mentions a number of other morphosyntactic contact phenomena, the selectors that I won't discuss today at all, and the infinitive orcs order that I'm also not going to, to discuss at all. But she mentions bare infinitives in constructions after prepositions as a Cushitic influence. So these are indications in uh, constructions in Rangi like I, I, I want to, uh, to, to dance with an infinitive, but you can also do it without the infinitive prefix and with a bare uh, vena for dance. And the second one is then stronger statement. But you can have that bare infinitive here in, in the next example with tema to cut as a, as a, in a construction with a relative marker. Um, interesting phenomenon. I would love to, uh, to understand it better, but I don't see this as a straightforward structural transfer from Westrift to Cushitic. They, uh, any, any, any verb would be bare in a way because there are no prefixes for infinitives in, in, in Westrift. So why would that only be here an influence from Westrift? I'm not convinced. Uh, Gibson and Martin, that article that I mentioned has those uh, four different uh, phenomena that they discuss. Is it in, uh, innovation um, within um, the group or is it because of uh, contact uh, phenomena? Uh, we have discussed the first two didactic particles in the Rangi, the to, jo, ko in the verbal system. Uh, I would like to know more. Does it exist in Bukwe? What's what I really would like to know. And, and could we see this as the Toga influence? So these are my questions to you in the audience. Um, there is a mention of a particular Rangi phenomenon, which is not shared with Bukwe, the distinction between inclusive, exclusive uh, possessives. Uh, fascinating. Um, it's just an idea that could this be maybe double reflexes of, of uh, links to uh, to the more F30 group and to the the, the, the more the para, the Chasu group. Because F30, they have the Isvi form and we have the Itu uh, form in Chasu. So is this maybe a sign of double reflexes that then got reinterpreted as a, as a um, semantic difference. So most of uh, these uh, uh, phenomena is difficult to say whether they're contact and or independent innovations. Those that are contact have also have some in of, um, internal motivations as well. Something about the cultural background that may be very interesting, but I should, I should uh, Hurry up. Maybe I'll, I will just go into the first one. This is very um, important to realize that um, what Stegen says there about uh, that many Burungi people have joined the Rangi in, in, the, in recent years. Um, and I think the same is going on. What I noticed last time when, when I was uh, in Kolo for the Alakwa people that there seemed to be a uh, um, rabbit. Uh, uh, shift to uh, to Rangi for the Burunga and the Alakwa. The, the marriage arrangements may, may play a role here. The two clans here among the Rangi, the Burunga clan and uh, the Alakwa relatives clans, that, that you can uh, that you can join um, um, if you if you yeah if you want to join one of the, the Rangi clans. So um, for Rangi, the, it's matrilineal, so the Rangi would, would consider children from Rangi ladies and, and Burunga Alakwa men to be, uh, to be, to be Rangi, 100% Rangi in their name. They'll become then also Rangi in their mother tongue and cultural traditions. I'll skip the other ones. 
because I want to look into the lexicon. And the lexicon, uh, I think that these slides will mainly show that this is an enormous amount of work to be done. Uh, we are working on it, but uh, we still have to, uh, to do a lot to tease out all the different contact scenarios for all the different layers of contact in the lexicon. Um, Eret 1999, indeed, that is the, what is it? That is the classical age book. Um, he has all these nice names. No? There's always uh, with the Eret. Mashariki is, is then East Bantu, and in Mashariki, the two groups, Kaskazi, the northern part. And in that northern part, he has two subgroups, Langi and Takama. Takama is a name that he has uh, coined for the F, uh, F30 languages. Um, and then I'm looking at his uh, innovations for this Kaskazi group. Well, I'm not going to discuss them, but these are some 13 uh, items that he has mentioned in, in, that, uh, in that article. Sorry, this is the article of Eret in, uh, in the historical uh, book edited by he uh, Hyman and Homber. Um, he, uh, all those ones that he, that he mentions, uh, are, Rangi shares them with the uh, Takama. So they are not clearly divisive between uh, Rangi and uh, Takama, except for one, the word for shave, where Rangi has a different root from the, from the F30 languages. Um, these are all the very interesting words, but the first one, we have had a, comp a whole uh, presentation by uh, Roland Kiesling on this first one. And that it is this first, this West Rift uh, Southern Cushitic uh, verb that has actually is at the basis of, of the, the widespread Bantu word for, in East Africa at least, for, for blood, Sakame. A lot of these words, they're really puzzles. They're all over East Bantu and, and, and uh, not restricted to uh, Rangi and Bukwe. And ideally, we would have to tease out uh, how these words spread through Bantu and where did they enter and at which, which different stages that they enter, groups of Bantu languages. There are more of them. I just have a few of them here. One other day, I hope to to have a yeah a talk about that. But then specific uh, to this area, Cushitic transfer into Rangi. Um, I, this is uh, what I have, I think, from from my own uh, data. Um, yeah, we have quite a few words that are from West Rift Cushitic uh, uh, into, uh, into Rangi. Of course, I would love to know, are they shared with, uh, with Mbukwe? So I've added also this last column. For some of them, yeah, maybe, although where they are, they are in bold. This is a different, different semantics even. So this is one of the works to do to see, okay, is this, to what extent is this just Rangi? And, and if it is, can we, can we also show which uh, Cushitic language it is? Alagwa would be the strongest uh, candidate there. Uh, Rangi and Alagwa have uh, quite a number of bird names in common. There is this uh, Caspi that's, uh, he's an anthropologist who, uh, who did a thesis on, on, uh, on Rangi. And one of his uh, publications is, is the, the, on all the, the Rangi fauna and flora. So a lot of bird names there, and some, some of them are shared with between the Rangi, but obviously in my book where uh, lexical data is insufficient to know whether this is shared with Mbukwe. Other way around, that also happens. You see, clearly see from Rangi and Alakwa, it goes both ways. So quite a number of loans of Rangi in Alak, into Alakwa. We can divide them up into, into uh, some uh, 
semantic areas, instruments, and some other cultural areas. Some of them are uh, from Rangi into Alagua. The, the Maringa, the beehive, that's probably a more complex story because also Iraku has a word Miringe for the beehive. So maybe those are independent parallel uh, intrusions from Bantu sources into, into the Cushitic languages. The birds uh, were there, but then another a clear group is vegetables. Uh, so it's clear that um, that uh, the Alakwa they 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 were, they learned about vegetables from the Rangi. It's a little bit of, in social uh, categories that they have a number of things from Rangi, but that's also the other way around. Interesting enough, there are also uh, a Cushitic uh, words on social relations uh, into uh, Rangi. So it's it's clearly um, the the dominance must uh, must have been shifting and maybe it wasn't always so clear which of the two were dominant. The new in any way the direction is both ways. Oh, I am should finish soon. I see. Uh, some last slides also loans from Bukwe into Iraku. I have fewer, but maybe also my data on, on Bukwe are, are not so rich. Here are some. For these, I would love to know, of course, are these also there in Gorwa? Uh, it would be strange if Iraku has them uh, in Bukwe, but not in, uh, in Gorwa. And here are some other words that are. Uh, where I, some of them I don't know the direction so clearly. The word for fish, siye in I, siyo in Iraq, siye in in Bukwe, not in Drangi that has samaki or sompa. But I'm not. I don't think that this is originally a Cushitic word. So this this may have gone back and forth from Bantu to Cushitic and vala is also difficult to know. Um, whether it's ultimately Cushitic or Bantu. Um, yeah, uh, there are other uh, very interesting contact uh, phenomena. I'm, I'm not talking at all about Sandawe, but that is something that we should also look into. But for example, Nyaturu, we have, we have some very Datoga sounding consonants in, uh, in Nyaturu. Um, Whereas in the lexicon, they all these 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 uh, the uvular fricatives uh, and, and and the glottal fricatives, they are they are actually they do uh, uh, occur in the in their inherited Bantu vocabulary quite a lot. Lexicon, I don't see that much influence on the, from the Toga, except for very specific uh, areas like the names for male animals, where they have the gida gida. Rida, the Rida prefix from the toga, and also some some words that are clearly the toga, like the Ngan, Ngadida for the lion and brave man, which is quite common in the area. Also, the Iraku can have that in in in, uh, in poetry, and I think also Hatsa can have something like that. So there is um, the lexical transfer research. To conclude this section, is a lot has still to be done. Uh, uh, this I'm just beginning to work on this, and then I will need to do the dedicated lexical research for all the languages. Or maybe I can can get some help from all the experts of these languages in this group. Even the Proto West Rift, which is a quite an extensive uh, reconstruction of the West Rift Cushitic languages, that needs to be um, expanded where possible and needed. The reconstruction of F30 is going to to to, to be very, very difficult, but, but crucial. And the differentiation of Datoga and Salonilotic will be, uh, will be also uh, conditioned to, to say something conclusive about the whole history of the area. And I haven't even, even looked at some of the other ones. I will certainly try to trace the spread of the Wanderwörter. Last slide. So yes, uh, there are all sorts of. It's still difficult to 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 uh, to know. Although I think we have a little bit more arguments uh, on all all together and whether 
what the link is with uh, with between um, between Rangi and Bukwe and and the uh, Chaga and the Taita languages. Uh, certainly, of course, there's a lot of links with uh, with the uh, F30. Um, and then with these arrows, I've indicated all sorts of um, lexical transfer, maybe not only lexical, between all these different languages in the area that we have already seen, but probably more to be to be established. And thank you. And sorry for the lack of the references. I was working on them when I didn't realize that the time was already there. Well, great. Thank you, Martin. I think we can now begin the question and answer section. Yes, please. If anyone would like to ask a question or offer a comment, you can do so using the Zoom chat window or by raising your hand. Also, please bear in mind that the audio of the question and answer section is being recorded. I will go ahead and start with my own question to give others a time to uh, some time to write. So thank you again for this presentation, Martin. I have uh, somewhat of a methodological question. Yes. So you've spoken a lot about the possibility that Rangi and Bukwe could be grouped together with either F30 or the Chaga Pare varieties. Yeah. And choosing between these two options is fairly straightforward because you can you can weigh the two against each other. So yeah. you can weigh the number of features shared by Rangi and Bugwe with these two other groups. Uh, what about the possibility of Rangi and Bugwe being a parallel branch to F30 and Chaga, uh, the Chaga Pare varieties? If the links between Rangi and Bugwe and the other groups is so limited or so tenuous, what evidence might lead you towards or away from a conclusion that they are an independent branch and has this been discussed elsewhere in the previous literature? Um, well, methodologically, well, it's difficult to uh, to to argue that they're independent. Uh, um, they are because I assume they are all Bantu, and um, so uh, waiting waiting the evidence is for me never counting. Um, so what I'm looking for is is the strongest evidence for common innovation. That is what I need for uh, for subclassification. So um, uh, when we when we so we look at I should have made this more clearly maybe. So um, in those uh, morphological innovations, um, one could argue that morphological innovations are, are could. Be, some of them at least could be less likely to be parallel. So when, when it is uh, very specific, they, um, there are strong evidence um, to, uh, to assume that the, the language groups have undergone them together. Um, so that, that is for the, but then, but then we have to really think, I'm still thinking about it, for how how uh, peculiar, how quirky is the fact that you have a reflexive functioning also for the reciprocal? One could uh, one could one could argue that uh, that is maybe not so quirky that that could be uh, parallel. The the nineteen as a as a as a plural of uh, of the diminutive class, yes, uh, but a different kind of uh, of um, uh, arrangement, uh, singular plurals. Yeah, that can happen, of course, um, when you when you have influx of flexicon uh, together with its uh, its plural. Um, difficult to say. So yeah, morph in general, morphological innovation, I would say is stronger, but then for the for the uh, phonological changes, um, it, I find it really, really difficult for internal Bantu uh, sub, sub classification to, uh, so what we would have to do is, 
what I would do rather than stating that these are maybe parallel innovations, parallel branching, I would like to see whether we can um, motivate uh, some of the examples as, uh, as borrowings in Rangi and the others as inherited, and then have a clear picture of, of what the, the, the sound change was at this first instance. If that answers your questions. I see a few others. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's maybe continue. I see Alvena would like to ask you a question. Uh, thank you, Martin. So um, I think it kind of uh, follows uh, on, on what you just said about uh, talking about reflexes and reci reciprocals, how uncommon this kind of syncretism is. The other example I had in mind is the, uh, uh, the one you showed about bare infinitives, uh, which you said might be um, a case of uh, due to language contact. And I was wondering uh, whether we know of uh, many more attested examples of this development in any other Bantu languages, as I have one example specifically in mind, namely from Luganda, where the process is ongoing and the coup is disappearing now. And for Luganda, it might be difficult to claim any kind of language contact. So it seems like an independent innovation and maybe not so striking in typological terms, because like, I guess the, not having a mark on the infinitives is maybe to be expected. I, I, I completely be... agree, Alena. I completely agree. So yes, it was uh, Margaret Dunham who, who, who suggested that it could be, uh, uh, that, it, that it could be Kushitic influence. I don't believe that at all. Okay. okay. Uh, do, do you or any actually of the participants have any other Bantu examples like where one could claim that this innovation is, has either happened or is ongoing as I do? Yeah, it would be nice just to have a few more case uh, or a few more tokens of the same development. I, I would I would look into where uh, I, I don't well all all the developments into the whole uh, tense aspect mood uh, system in Bantu languages when they come from from a separate uh, verb mm -hmm. they must have lost the the the, the infinitive at some point. So mm -hmm. uh, right, yeah. 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 Thank you. But maybe some of the participants have uh, mm -hmm. specific examples. But it 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 must have it is remnant all over Bantu in in grammaticalization uh, yeah. in in the in the tense aspect systems. Thank you. Great, thank you, Elena. Next we have Amani Lucicello, who says that he has three short questions. Thank you, Amani. Uh, in the last slide. Martin. Yeah. Yeah. I see an error indicating an influence of Maasai uh, to Tumbugwe. Very well spotted, Armani, and I didn't mention that. Uh, it's um, it's a fascinating thing. If you look at the earliest, one of the earliest uh, descriptions of 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 uh, Bugwe, then there's a remark, I think that's Stempel, if it's beginning of the 20th century, that there is a, a lot of le uh, added in the beginning, before the noun prefix. So we saw it in one example, le musamba. And, and I don't think, Lizzie will correct me, I don't think that is there in Buku anymore. But at his times, it was the ole, the Masai ole, that people could add to... Uh, to nouns uh, if they like to. So uh, very, <laughs> very, uh, yeah, surprising Maasai influence on Bukwe. Uh, uh, and there is no other way in, uh, in which Maasai have influenced another language in the area, because I assume they, they, uh, it's, it's known that the Maasai are well known for the uh, impact is the warrior type of life in, in which they, I would say, they harass the rest of the communities in the Rift Valley area. And I assume since they are superior, the, the uh, words or sound patterns or um, affixes would have moved into these minority communities. So yeah. when I saw an arrow, they said, oh, yeah, this is fantastic yes. now. Yes, this, this reflects for sure, for one big part, my ignorance, because I, I really, I don't know the, 
the, the Maasai well enough and haven't looked at it well uh, enough. Um, but also, I think that the, well, the context, uh, if I know, yeah, what you say. I mean, if, if I look at the Iraqi stories about their contact with the Maasai, it's about fights and, and not very intimate in speaking. Um, um, so, um, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't... I don't know about other contact phenomena, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is more. But I also have to say that Maasai presence was relatively late and, and uh, exchange is uh, seems to have been uh, often quite uh, hostile. Thank you. And the Alagua, mm, uh, I was looking to, uh, you said, uh, uh, Alago has borrowed from Rangi on uh, uh, let's quite terms associated with vegetation. But, yeah. yeah and, and I thought the Alago are farmers since then. And they adopted the pastoralism later. Yeah, I, uh, it's difficult to, to know. I think the Alakwa, probably all of the, uh, the Tanzanian Kushitic people had also pastoralism from the beginning, but not in the way that the Nilotic people have them. It's very much mixed agriculture. Use the cattle for cow dung. I mean, for Iraqu, the most valuable thing of the cattle is the dung. Um, the, but what I think what happens in in flora and fauna is this is and this is the insignificant flora and fauna is that um, uh, I see it as the limitation of uh, extensive lexicon. So if you if you learn a number of uh, of languages and that's what these people do in the area, they all speak a number of languages. Then uh, you won't have that uh, in the complete lexicon for those areas of the lexicon that are maybe not so important anymore. So. So for the for the uh, the insignificant insects, birds, some plants, they go either way. You uh, if 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 you learned it in in uh, Rangi and you are Rangi Alakwa bilingual, you will use it for both and and the same the other way around. But also what I found and I had completely forgotten that in the the first. Um, the first Germans reporting on on uh, on the Rangi in the area, uh, that's even end of the 19th century. They claim that the Rangi were buying ivory from the Alakwa and the Burungi. So that means that uh, that Alakwa Burungi must have also done some some hunting, and not only uh, farming. Okay, thank you. Mm. I think I should stop there. Yeah, thank you, Omani. We have a number of comments in the chat. Hannah Gibson says, um, in relation to didactic particles, she thinks that Vera Williamson has a possible ventive marker in Mbugwe, Ja coming and doing. And then Lizzie Poole responds, yes, uh, Ja has a ventive marker in Mbugwe, but it, she thinks that it works differently to Rangi, so in Mbugwe it's a tam slot, and in Rangi it's it's a preverbal morphine. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is also what. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> All right, I believe we. Yeah, have... and then uh, Andrew also has the compounding for the diminutive. Yes. Yes. In Ihanzu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Richard, when I have this all on paper, is there a way that I can send it to all these people? Send uh, to send what? Well, to send the text version of the talk. Text version. Uh, you mean an automatic transcription? No, I mean what I what I said, but then written down, because I I guess Lizzie can help me somewhere with a book where 
like Andrew helps me with the Hanzu and all those kinds of issues. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we could we could find a way to. Do that. Oh, maybe you can put it in the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, so. Uh, Roland says he has some remarks. But I think that means he'd like to speak. I will ask to unmute him. Always important, Roland remarks. Oh, yes. Now I can. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Thank you, Roland. Yeah. Uh, I was kicked out at a certain point, so I haven't got everything, uh, but I have some tiny remarks. And I don't know if you uh, want to tease those out. You were asking for the uh, Datoga parallels to the deictics. Uh, the deictics yeah. are featured now in the in the comments, these uh, to, jo, and ko elements in the yeah. language. Is it, uh, if you uh, look at Datoga, um, well, if you're looking for categorical uh, correspondence, there might be, uh, because you have it in the verbal derivational system, the centripetal and the centrifugal, if you're looking for that one. Yeah. And, but there are, I think there are decisive differences. Uh, the, you have the different forms, so there's no obvious formal a parallel that I could see. The centripetal is un or u and n. Um, in a kind of allomorphic relationship for the centripetal and the centrifugal is D. Uh, I don't remember the, uh, I don't have the details of the Rangi semantics now, uh, but this in, in Datoga, it's not transparently, you can't see any transparent uh, grammaticalization uh, path. So it's very deeply uh, grammaticalized uh, <laughs> or entrenched. And uh, Mm, whereas in Rangi, I had the impression that this has recently uh, yes. been grammaticalized from verbs. Yeah, and just Rangi, eh? not in book. Way. Yeah, precisely. But uh, of course, the parallel is this uh, associative uh, locomotion yeah. to yeah. go and do and so on. Yeah, yes. And, and, uh, and uh, just one bits and pieces from... Uh, I think it was 44, uh, the Alagua loans from, Ra uh, from Rangi, which uh, Amani also mentioned. Um, yeah, you can, uh, it's, it's nearly the same for Burungi, or you find uh, so many parallels. Um, the items that you listed for Alagua, yeah. most of them could also be found in Burungi. But I, it's, uh, sometimes you can see that these are have independently been borrowed, I think. Oh yes, and I don't have them uh, now. I don't know them by heart, but uh, there are correspondences. But uh, correspondences, but there are also differences. Uh, so at one point you may say that uh, they might have been borrowed from uh, Rangi or some predecessor of, of Rangi at an earlier stage when Alagua and Burungi might have been together. And in other cases, you can't. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know um, if you, uh, I, I don't know if we had sorted that out at any time. No, and this is what I, I, I need to do now, but it's, yeah. um, it is, it's not, it's difficult because, uh, yeah, of all this, I mean, the, the Alakwa Burungi uh, having stayed together for a while, that impossible influence, and then, uh, but yes, ideally, we would be able to, 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 sh to shift that all out. So what is, <laughs> what is Rangi separate to Alakwa Burungi? Uh, what is uh, uh, um, yeah. at an earlier stage? Um, now, what? Is, yeah, all of, yes. Hopefully, I can uh, I can yeah. do a little bit on, of that. Yeah. Well, this is very interesting. And uh, final remark on uh, forty-six. I think the water pot uh, is that. I think we have reconstructed that for West Drift. Uh, Sirui, because there's a Sibida in Burundi. Right. Sorry. Yes. So that has to be the other way around. Yeah. And uh, Andrew remarks that Gorwa has Siri, uh, but of course there have been some changes, uh, yeah. some remarkable changes. Hmm. 
uh, if you compare the southern Cushitic uh, yes. reflexes of this. Thank you for that correction. Yes, that's a mistake. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Roland. I don't think I see any other questions right now. Just wait another minute. And perhaps now I can take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found in the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. I will go ahead and add links to those in the chat for anyone who would like to look at them. So Mani has a, a statement or perhaps it's a question. I don't know, the Umbugu versus Umbugwe. Yeah, 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 Pare. that's a variation of the same word in Pare. The Mbugweni, that is uh, the name of the place of in Bugu land, in Bugu area, yeah. Yes, the uh, Amani, yes, the Mbugu. Um, when you go to Mbugweni in, in the Pare Mountains, you, you find people who don't speak Ma'a anymore, but who have this memory. Uh, and also other people recognize them that they are of Mbugu origin. They now speak uh, Chasu, Chathu, actually. Uh, but um, yeah, it is the same, the same uh, route. Uh, and presumably also the same word as in Bukwe in, uh, in, in the Babati area. Whether that's just coincidence or whether there is a historical link that is to be decided, but it is, uh, yeah, it sounds uh, tantalizing to suggest that. Mbugu is their word for the for the Mbugu people in in normal Mbugu in the in the language that is so close to Pare and then you know I analyze it as a parallel lexicon the parallel in Mbugu the mixed lexicon is Ma'a so Ma'a is a, the two words uh, that we linguists use Ma'a for the mixed language, Bugu for the Bantu languages is not the way the people use it. They would say Bugu Chandani or Bugu Chakavaita for both or Ma'a for both, depending whether they speak the, the, the Bantu normal one or the mixed one. Great, thank you. Just wait another minute to see if anyone else has a comment or a question. Thank you all for being here. This is, uh, wow, this is great. So many people for such a specific topic. Yes, that's quite exciting. Well, uh, looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will take place on Wednesday, February 10th. The talk is titled Word Order Variation in Sandawe, and the talk will be given by Helen Eaton. Great, yeah. All right, well, I'd like to thank you again, Martin, for your presentation, and thank you, everyone else, for participating today, and I hope to see you again at our next webinar. <laughs>